Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the dividing terms practice questions. If you need any extra help on dividing terms, if you go to corpmaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 11, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on dividing terms. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, let's have a look at our first question, question number one. So question number one says simplify 18x divided by 3. Well, if we had 18x's and we divide them by 3, if we share it into three equal piles, you'd have 6x, 6x, and 6x. Or another way to think of it is if you have 18x divided by 3, well, 18 divided by 3 is 6, and then we've got our x, so the answer is just 6x, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number two. So sometimes instead of having the divide symbol, we've got this line, and it just means 20m divided by 5. So if we had 20m and we divided by 5, well, 20 divided by 5 is 4, so we'd have 4m. So the answer would just be 4m, and that's it. So 20m divided by 5 is 4m. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number three. So question number three says simplify 24y divided by 8. So 24 divided by 8 is 3. So 24y divided by 8 would be 3y. So the answer is just 3y. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 4. So question number 4 says to simplify 21a divided by 3. Well, 21 divided by 3 is 7. So 21a divided by 3 would be 7a. So the answer is 7a. And that's it, 7a. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 5. So question number five says to simplify 8c divided by 2c. So if we had 8c and we divided by 2c, let's divide the numbers and then divide the letters. So we've got 8 divided by 2, that's 4. And then c divided by c, well, if you divide something by itself, you get 1. So these cancel out. c divided by c, they just cancel out. So that would be 4 times 1, which is 4, or just 4, and that's it. So if we had 8c divided by 2c, the answer would be 4, and that's it. And if that makes sense, then actually we can check our answer. If we had 2c and we multiply by 4, well, 2c times 4 is 8c, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 6. So question number 6 says to simplify fully 12y squared divided by 2y. So again, let's divide the numbers and then we'll divide the letters. So let's divide the numbers to begin with. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then we've got y squared divided by y. Well, if we would y squared and we divided by y, we'd just be left with y. Because obviously, if you do y times y, you get y squared. So if you have y squared and you divide it by y, you'd be left with y. And that's it. So 12y squared divided by 2y is 6y. And let's just check our answer. If we, if we take our 6y and multiply by 2y, do we get 12y squared? Well, 2 times 6 is 12, and y times y is y squared. So the answer would be 12y squared. And that's it. So the answer is 6y. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 7. So question number seven, we've been asked to simplify 13w plus 23w divided by six. So what we're going to do in this question is we're going to work out the numerator to begin with. We're going to simplify this numerator. So 13w plus 23w. Well, 13 plus 23 is equal to 36. So 13w plus 23w would be 36w. And then we've still got divided by six. Now we just need to take our 36w and divide it by six. Well, 36 divided by six is six. So 36w divided by six would be 6w. And the answer is just 6w. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number eight. So question number eight says match the equivalent expressions. So we've got some calculations on the left hand side and some answers on the right. We need to match them. So let's work out each of these to begin with. So 4x squared divided by 2x. Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And x squared divided by x. Well, x squared divided by x would be x. So 4x squared divided by 2x would be 2x. And let's just check 2x times 2x is 4x squared. So that would be that one. Next, 6x divided by 3x. Well, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And x divided by x is 1. They can't cancel out so we just get 2 and let's just check if we had 3x and we times it by 2 we do get 6x so that's that one and so hopefully this one will be 2x squared let's just check 8 divided by 4 is 2 and x cubed divided by x well if you've got x times x times x and you divide it by an x you just be left with x squared so it'd be 2x squared so that's the one at the top and that's it okay let's have a look at our next question question number nine so question number nine says simplify fully 8w over 12w. Now the first thing I notice here is that whenever we have 8 and 12, we can't just divide and get a nice whole number like the ones before. So actually in this question, I'm going to deal with the w's to begin with. Well, if we had w and we divide it by w, you just get 1. So they cancel out. The w and the w will cancel out. So we're just going to get 8 twelfths. And now we can cancel this down. 8 and 12 are both divisible by 4. So we can divide both of these by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that means our answer will be 2 thirds. So if we had 8w over 12w and you were to cancel it down, the answer would be 2 thirds. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 10. 
So question number 10 says to simplify 8y plus 12 divided by 2. Now we're dividing all of this by 2, so we just need to divide what's on the numerator by 2. So we need to do 8y divided by 2, and we need to do 12 divided by 2. So 8y divided by 2, well, 8y divided by 2 would be 4y, so we'd have 4y. Then we've got our plus, and then we would have 12 divided by 2, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. So 8y plus 12 divided by 2 would be 4y plus 6. And then we can just check this. If we take our 4y plus 6 and we multiply it by 2, we would get 8y plus 12. So the answer is 4y plus 6, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 11. And question number 11 says to simplify 18x to the power 5 divided by 6x squared. Now, before we do this question, I'd highly recommend you watch the video on laws of indices and also you look at the video on multiplying terms. And whenever you're dealing with multiplying terms, you get to learn things like this. For instance, if you had x to the power of 10 multiplied by x to the power of 4, that would be equal to x to the power of 14 because you'd add the powers together. If you had x times x times x times x times x, and you had 10 of them, times x times x times x times x, that would be all together 14x's multiplied together and you'd get x to the power of 14. So whenever you're multiplying terms with the same base, you add the powers. So to x to the power of 10, times x to the power of 4 would be x to the power of 14. Likewise, if we had something like this, where we'd have x to the power of 8, and we divide it by x to the power of 3, we can take away the powers. So if we had x to the power of 8 divided by x to the power of 3, you take away the powers, that'd be x to the power of 5. And we can check it if we had x to the power of 5, and we times by x to the power of 3, adding the powers would be x to the power of 8. So whenever we're dividing terms, if you're dividing things with the same base, you can just take away the powers. Okay, so let's have a look at question number 11 then. So question number 11 says simplify 18x to the power of 5 divided by 6x squared. So let's deal with the numbers to begin with. 18 divided by 6 is 3, so that's 3. And then we've got x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 2. Well, let's take away the power, so that'll be x to the power of 5 take away 2 is 3. So the answer would be 3x cubed, and that's it. And let's just check it. If we take our answer and multiply it by 6x squared, do we get what we're dividing? So 6 times 3 is 18, and x squared times x cubed is x to the power of 5. So yeah, that's it, 3x to the power of 3. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 12. So question number 12 says to simplify fully 14ac squared divided by 7c. So let's deal with the numbers to begin with. 14 divided by 7 is 2, so we've got 2. Then we've got a, well, we're not dividing by anything, so we still have the a. And then we've got c squared divided by c. Well, if we've got c squared divided by c, well, that would just be c. So that would be 2ac. And let's just check that. If we had 2ac, if we multiply by 7c, do we get our 14ac squared? Well, 7 times 2 is 14. And c times ac would be ac squared. That's it. So 14ac squared. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 13. So question number 13, we've been asked to simplify fully 24a squared w squared divided by 3a. Well, let's deal with the numbers to begin with. 24 is divisible by 3, so that's great. So that's 8. And then we've got a squared divided by a. Well, that's going to be a. And then we've still got our w squared. We're not dividing it by anything, so it's going to be 8aw squared. So 8aw squared. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 14. So question number 14, we've been asked to simplify fully 10a cubed divided by 2a. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then we've got a cubed divided by a. Well, that's a to the power of 1. We can take away the powers. So 3 take away 1 is 2. So it's going to be a squared. And if you had a cubed and you divided by a, that's going to be a squared. I'm just checking it. a times a times a. If you divide it by a, one of those is going to cancel. So you're left with a times a, which is a squared. And that's it. So if we had 10a cubed divided by 2a, the answer would be 5a squared. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 15. So question number 15 says to simplify c to the power of 8 divided by c squared. So in this one, they've got the same basis, so we can just write c, and we can take away the powers 8 take away 2 is 6. So if we had c to the power of 8 divided by c squared, the answer is c to the power of 6. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 16. So question number 16, we've been asked to simplify fully 12x to the power of 6 divided by 4x squared. So again, let's divide the numbers in front. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And x to the power of 6 divided by x squared, we're going to take away the powers. 6 take away 2 is 4. So the answer would be 3x to the power of 4. 3x to the power of 4. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 17. So question number 17 says, to simplify fully 8c to the power of 6 divided by 4c cubed. So again, let's deal with the numbers in front. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so we've got 2. And then we've got c to the power of 6 divided by c to the power of 3, or c cubed. So let's take away the power, so that's going to be c. And then 6 take away 3 is 3. So the answer is 2c cubed. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 18. So question number 18, we've been asked to simplify a times a times a times b divided by a times b times b. 
Now in this question, what we could do is we could simplify the top line and get a cubed times b, so that's going to be a cubed b, and we could simplify the bottom line, which would be a b squared, and then cancel it down that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel this down. So if I've got a and I divide it by a, those two would cancel out. You just get one, so they would cancel out. Then we've got b, and we're going to divide it by b. So then we're left with on the top a times a, which is a squared, and we've got a b on the bottom, so it's over b, and that's it. So the answer would be a squared over b, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 19. And we've been asked to simplify x to the power of 5 times y cubed over xy squared. Okay, so let's cancel these down. So we've got x to the power of 5 divided by x. So that's going to be x to the power of 4. And then we've got y cubed divided by y squared. Well, taking away the powers would be y to the power of 1, which is just y. So the answer would be x to the power of 4, y. And that's it, x to the power of 4, y. And we can check our answer if we multiply this by what we're dividing by. So x times x to the power 4 is x to the power 5. And y squared times y is y cubed. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 20. So question number 20, we've been asked to simplify 36x to the power of 8y squared divided by 9x to the power of 5y. Okay, so 36 divided by 9 is 4 x to the power of 8 divided by x to the power of 5. Well, let's take away the powers. 8 take away 5 is 3, so that's x cubed. And then y squared divided by y. Well, that's just going to be y. So the answer would be 4x cubed y. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 21. So question number 21, we've been asked to simplify fully 4c to the power of 5g cubed over 4c squared g squared. So... 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I'm actually not going to write anything down there, because remember in algebra, if you had x and 1x, it's the same thing, but we tend not to write 1x, we just write x. So here, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so let's not write anything at the minute. Then we've got c to the power of 5 divided by c squared, Well, let's take away the powers, that's going to be c, and 5 take away 2 is 3, so that's c cubed. And then we've got g cubed divided by g squared, Well, taking away the powers would be g to the power of 1, or just g. So the answer would be c cubed g, so it's c cubed g, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 22. So question number 22 says, shown below is a rectangle with a width of 2x. So as you can see, it's got a width of 2x. And the area of the rectangle is 8x squared. So remember, to find the area, we do the length multiplied by the width, and that will give us the area. And the question says, find the perimeter of the rectangle. So we want to find the distance around the outside of the rectangle. And to do that, we're going to need to know the length and the width of the rectangle. Now, we know the width. The width is 2x, but we want to find the length. So let's find the length. So to find the length of the rectangle, well, we know the area. And to find the area, we've done the length multiplied by the width to get the area. So if we divide the area by the width, we'll get the length. So let's take the area, which is 8x squared, and let's divide it by the width, which is 2x. And what we get as our answer will be the length of the rectangle. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. And x squared divided by x, well, that would just be x. So that means the length of the rectangle is 4x. So we've got the length is 4x, the width is 2x, the length here would be 4x, and the width here would be 2x. And the question says to find the perimeter of the rectangle. So we just need to do 4x plus 2x plus 4x plus 2x. And when we work that out, that will tell us the perimeter of the rectangle. So 4x plus 2x is 6x plus 4x is 10x plus 2x is 12x. So that means the perimeter of the rectangle is 12x. And that's it. So 12x. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 23. And question number 23, we've been asked to simplify x to the power of 8 cubed divided by x to the power of 4. Now, to do this question, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get rid of these brackets. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. One way is you can watch the video called Laws of Indices and look at this and know it's a power of a power. And if you've got a power of a power or a power of a power, if you've got a power of a power, you multiply the powers together. So I'm going to do this sort of question using two approaches. So let's use that power of a power to begin with. So if you've got a bracket like this and you've got a power and then another power, you can multiply the powers together. So that would be if we do 8 times 3, that's going to be 24. So you get x to the power of 24 on the numerator, and then the bottom we'll still get x to the power of 4. And then remember, if we're dividing, we take away the powers, so 24 take away 4 is 20. So the answer would be x to the power of 20. That's it, x to the power of 20. So that's one approach to that question. And there's another approach to that question, and that is to write it out in full. I'm actually just going to change color of ink to blue here, just to show you. So here, whenever we had x to the power of 8 cubed, that means x to the power of 8 multiplied by x to the power of 8 multiplied by x to the power of 8, so that's the numerator, x to the power of 8 cubed, divided by x to the power of 4. 
And remember, for multiplying terms, if you're multiplying terms together, you can add the powers. 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24. So you'd get x to the power of 24 over x to the power of 4. And now you can take away the powers, and that would also be x to the power of 20. And that's it. So you can use either one of those approaches. You can just multiply to begin with and get x to the power of 24, and then just write over x to the power of 4 and take away the powers, and you get x to the power of 20. Alternatively, because this is quite a nice one with cubes, you could just write it out three times and add the powers. If this was a bigger number, for instance, x to the power of 8 to the power of 15, you wouldn't want to write it out 15 times, so it's quicker just to multiply them. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 24. So question number 24 says to simplify 5x to the power of 4 over x to the power of negative 2. So this question is a bit different than the ones we've looked at so far because we've got a negative power, but we use the same technique when we're dividing, we take away the powers. So let's deal with the numbers to begin with. We've got 5 divided by, and then here we've got a 1. 5 divided by 1 is 5, so that's 5. And then we're going to have x. And then we've got x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of negative 2. So we're going to take away the powers. So we're going to do 4 subtract negative 2. And 4 minus minus 2, 4 plus 2 is 6. So that would be 5x to the power of 6. And that's it, 5x to the power of 6. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our last question, question number 25. And question number 25 says to simplify 4 bracket x plus 3 close brackets over x plus 3 close bracket squared. So in this question, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify it. And if we notice, we've got the same bracket on the top and on the bottom. So we've got x plus 3, and here we've got x plus 3 squared. So what we know is if this means x plus 3 times itself. So we've got x plus 3 times x plus 3. And one of those x plus 3s can cancel with this x plus 3 on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this x plus 3, and I'm going to get rid of the squared. Because if we had, I'm actually just writing it out in full, actually. If we had 4 bracket x plus 3, close brackets, and then on the denominator, if we had x plus 3, bracket x plus 3, like so, just writing the bracket out twice because it's squared. We could cancel out one of the brackets with one of the brackets because they would divide to give us 1. And we'd just be left with 4 over x plus 3. So we'd have 4 over x plus 3. So we'd write 4 over. And then instead of putting this x plus 3 in brackets because there's nothing else there, I'm just going to write x plus 3. And that's it. So the answer would be 4 over x plus 3. And that's it. Now, if I had this question, I probably wouldn't write it out twice. I probably would just cancel that bracket with one of these brackets, and it would leave me with 4 over x plus 3. And that's it. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the divide and turn practice questions. I really hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you need any extra help on dividing terms, if you go to courtmaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 11, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on dividing terms. But again, I hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.